Hey YouTube, I'm trying out a new setup here. I got the webcam going this time with the virtual background. Um, I uploaded a video this morning and um, I was happy with how it turned out. So if you haven't seen it, you really should go back and watch it. I covered a lot of details about what I discovered with these statues. And I had several people comment on that video saying that it was great research and they hadn't heard anyone else cover it this thoroughly. So again, if you haven't seen it, go watch it after this video. Um, one thing that I did want to cover was that in the previous video, I brought up how the United Nations building um, actually came up from the sea. Um, I have a picture here. Let's see. This one. Um, this is a uh, this is an older map of Manhattan, the east side. And Turtle Bay here actually used to um, be in this area. So Turtle Bay goes from about 80, or sorry, 43rd Street to about 48th. So this building um, rose up out of the sea, and the, the original Jaguar Beast was in one of these courtyards. And one thing that I wanted to bring up, you know, it's on the East River. So I thought, okay, well, in Daniel, just a moment, in Daniel here, when it's talking about the beast coming up out of the sea, I thought that people might take issue with me saying that it comes up out of the sea when it's actually a river. Um, both the Daniel verses and the Revelation verses talk about beasts coming up out of the sea. So in Daniel 7, 3 here, And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. That's the jaguar. If you look here, this is a blue letter Bible. It's like an online version that you can get the original Greek and Hebrew. And you go here to the sea. You see it's Hebrew word 3221. Now, uh, outline of biblical usage, C. Okay, that's fair. But the root word, the etymology, corresponds to H3220. And you see transliteration, same word. Pronunciation, same word. Root word, um, it's the same. Like, you go back to the original 3221, yam. You go to 3220. Yom. So, outline of biblical usage, Mediterranean Sea, Red Sea, Dead Sea, Sea Galilee. That's fair, right? From an unused root word meaning to roar, a sea. Um, large body of water, specifically um, the Mediterranean Sea. Sometimes a large river. So, I feel like it's fair to use this in this context that um, this came up from a large river. It used to be Turtle Bay. Go back to the previous video for more on that. So something that I brought up in the previous video, I said that when I looked up the artists that created this, I didn't find anything relevant um, to speak about, but that would be incorrect. As I was editing, I found some things that were quite curious. Previous videos all about these and how they relate to peace and safety, peace and security. So when I went back and I looked at the, uh, the creators of it, I found something quite interesting. Now, this page, uh, I could only get it to display in Spanish, so I had to put it in Google Translate, and I got it to translate into English. So, if you look this website up, you will only find it in Spanish. So, I've had this translated into English, because this is the only way I can get it to uh, display where I can read it. So, um, Guardians. They didn't translate that one. So we've got the dragon here. The 
Hokobo y Maria Angles workshop created two guardians to live in New York City with the mission of accompanying and protecting all Latin America, Mexican, and Ozakan migrants who live or are about to arrive in the United States looking for better future for their families. These two monumental figures are part of the narrative set out in collection, the collection of nomads. Just a side note, um, you know, protecting all Latin America who are about to arrive in the United States looking for better future of the families. Um, you know, these things are in front of Rockefeller Center, and America currently has an issue with um, people just flooding in through the Mexican border. And, um, you know, it's all part of the one world agenda that they would, you know, just bring people in in a lawless kind of way. Uh, let's not get on that whole immigration thing. As their name implies, sorry, it keeps bringing up this original text. Um, as their name implies, they keep everything that the tribe considers valuable. It's traditions, customs, cultural identity. This stuff isn't really that relevant to what I want to get at. But they have the jaguar here again. Uh, mouth like a lion, feet like a bear, uh, wings like an eagle. Here's the dragon again. I thought that I read somewhere that they chose colors that were representative of LGBT culture. Here's what I find the most interesting about this and the part that I wish that I, you know, may have spoken on earlier. Nomads, okay? So back here, they said that these two monumental figures are part of the narrative set out in the collection of nomads. Check this out. Nomads. Nomads is a collection that represents three years of work and effort. In it, the vision of a dystopian future is proposed where science merges with ancestral Zapotec beliefs, genetically experimenting human beings with animal characteristics to grant them greater longevity, resistance, and adaptation to the earth in order to face the adversities that it brings them, the migration. So this is sitting here telling you that the No Bad collection is all about this Chimera stuff. Um, I've recently seen videos where they're making... Um, Pigs with human parts to test COVID, uh, whatever, whatever. So it's interesting that the Rockefellers would choose to have this in front of their building. Um, they would choose to have it in front of their United Nations building that they're heavily involved with. And um, it's all about genetically experimenting human beings with animal characteristics. You know, it goes back to the Chimera stuff. Uh, Genesis 6 and how the DNA was corrupted and uh, goes into all the, the flood and the Nephilim stuff going on there. And then since this stuff has some interesting chimera background that the um, Rockefellers are bringing to your attention, I wanted to bring this to light. This, um, I don't know if anybody had seen this before. When I posted this on Facebook originally, when I first saw the dragon, someone made a comment and said that on a Paul Begley video, that uh, this guy Mike from around the world said that there were actually three of these statues. I can't confirm that. I can't prove that. Um, this thing actually says that the workshop created two guardians. So I think that, you know, is speculation, but I think it's worth mentioning because look at this. I don't have a better angle on this, but what is that? That is a six. And there's another one on the Jaguar over here. When you look at the dragon. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's right there on the chest. 
but that six is right there on the chest. So if perhaps there were three of these, that would be 666, would it not? That's a six. It's right here on the pedestal, and it's also right here. I believe it's their company logo, if I had to guess. So there's at least two of these right in front of the United Nations, right in front of the Rockefeller Feller building with a six right on front of it. And it, uh, it comes from a collection that represents genetically experimenting with human beings with animal characteristics. Here's an example of some of the chimera stuff that we've got going on. In a first, surgeons attach a pig kidney to a human, and it worked. A kidney grown in a genetically altered pig functions normally, scientists reported. The procedure may open the door to a renewable source of desperately needed organs. So they're doing chimera stuff in the name of organ donation. Here's another one, um, how scientists grew human muscles in pig embryos and why it matters for organ transplants. This is 2021. First monkey-human embryos reignite debate over hybrid animals. So we've got a lot of chimera stuff going on. And, you know, I won't go into it all here, but I believe that in Luke... Uh, I forget which chapter it is, 17. It says that it'll be as the days of Lot. It'll be as the days of Noah. And one of the things, when, when the Son of Man appears. So one of the issues about the days of Noah was that I believe that only eight people survived because it says that Noah was perfect in his generations. If you study that out, I believe that Noah's DNA was intact and that the entire rest of the creation was destroyed because of corrupted DNA. Uh, fallen angels having sex with human women, creating giants, and the entire creation was corrupted in the DNA. Uh, Book of Enoch corroborates that. And, um, you know, this, chima this chimera thing is an abomination. You know, it's taking something that God created and making it into something that God didn't create. Um, I believe the reason that God had to destroy all the all the Nephilim and uh, the hybrids and all that stuff is because they're no longer human. They're not um, redeemable. And I know it's a touchy subject to talk about on the YouTube, but there's certain things that if you put in, they make you no longer human because they edit your DNA. So. I think I'll leave it at that. Um, there's other things that I will save for the next video. But, you know, leave a comment below. What do you think? Do you think that this is uh, the same as the Genesis 6 Nephilim problem? Um, do you think the chroma key, uh, I don't know, chroma cam, webcam with the virtual background, does that work? Um, you know, give me your input. And uh, keep looking up. Uh, this is getting very weird very fast, and I think we're at the precipice, you know. Uh, I've been watching for years, and this is about as weird as I've ever seen it. Uh, Jesus can come back any moment now, especially with how much they're pressuring to start uh, mandating things. Because... I don't think the church is supposed to be here <laughs> when there's um, the end of Revelation 13 happening. No one can buy or sell. With that, I say God bless. Jesus is Lord. See you on the next one.